welcome to the program sir and uh, i'd go straight to the point uh, mm -hmm. there's one of the your comments which is uh, obviously you are familiar now doing the rounds uh, essentially about uh, how the pakistani military the pakistani state uh, and particularly at the time of former prime minister nawaz sharif was involved in training and supporting proxy elements militants etc what led you to uh, point fingers in that direction i mean obviously you at the helm of affairs was privy to information that many of us didn't have so what was uh, really what got you to make those assertions well, uh, no i think it has been uh, um, misperceived uh, uh, whatever i said uh, this was to a german uh, uh, interview friends. yes but uh, i didn't say that uh, um, people have perceived it to me meaning that uh, i was talking of my own period that i was doing that being in charge of the government and i'm encouraging mujahideen and training them and sending them into arming them and sending them into india into uh, what what we call ihk indian health kashmir uh, i was talking of the period of 90s the decade of 90s where i was not on the scene and secondly i didn't say that they have been training in fact i i have always said that these mujahideen groups sprung up on their own because of great public sympathy tremendous public sympathy so therefore they sprung up themselves and there was thousands of volunteers prepared to uh, go into kashmir and fight and there was just public sympathy there was uh, no role of the military or the establishment no, no. in training no, arming no. Or i i never said that them. i never said that at all even in this interview i never said that uh because there was great public sympathy and there was no requirement of anybody else uh, to assist in that people were prepared themselves to why is it sir that particularly you was wanting to look beyond the stated line that existed no it i think uh, uh, that's not the case uh, there there were new elements which got introduced in the environment as far as kashmir was concerned purely uh, the kashmir freedom struggle as i said lot of uh, uh, mujahideen groups came up and they had great public support but clearly as army chief and then as president you were aware no. that they were operating on the border with india everyone was everyone was aware uh, that they were operating uh, but they had great public sympathy as i said the new element that was introduced was the 911 now 911 and then emerged the taliban uh, and the taliban and uh, al qaeda uh, all this was happening in the decade of 90s also so its impact uh, where the mujahideen got mixed up with the taliban and after 911 they got more mixed up and then there was some there was elements who were against my decision of joining the coalition and therefore they turned their guns inwards uh, but, towards uh, inside it's, pakistan it's, it's, but uh, it's 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 uh, some of the people close to you have been on record to say that you always saw a role for the taliban in afghanistan pre 911 post 911 and then your successor general kayani has been on record to suggest that the taliban some of the leadership especially mr hakani uh, would be seen as strategic assets now uh, i mean what is the merit in that vp not at all Uh, pre 911 yes indeed pre 911 the taliban were holding 90% of afghanistan they were pakhtun ethnic pakhtuns having historical geographic religious cultural linkages with pakhtuns on our side in baluchistan and 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 the frontier province so therefore uh, certainly any government every government in the 90s and beyond uh, after 95 when taliban came into being including myself were had a mission there we were dealing with them we had diplomatic relations with them but then post 911 now this was a different situation there was a terrorist attack the, on the world trade center and uh, and these taliban now there was a war against the taliban you have also been on record to say so that if the taliban is now not uh, dealt with firmly uh, they could then and the us and nato withdrawal from afghanistan could lead to the taliban hounding them in western capitals and the us now could you substantiate on that further sir not the taliban i have been talking of al qaeda right al qaeda is and this al qaeda or taliban is not a monolith ek to we should understand that Absolutely. there is no one commander commanding all al qaeda in the whole world 
there are different factions there is a there is an aqab al qaeda in arab peninsula based around somalia and yemen then there is aqim al qaeda in islamic maghrib based around algeria and mali then of course there is etim uzbek islamic movement so, etc all these are developing a nexus and that is what is happening and we should guard against that what is your I'm, i i will be cutting sir because of the constraints of time but what is your view when even the former british prime minister has been on record to say that 70% of extremist elements do come out of afpak region and even pakistan's uh, formal territory what is your view what would you be a counter to that i mean is that is there merit in that kind of a view well uh, the statement of the uh, uh, the prime minister in india against pakistan was rather undiplomatic and i don't think i don't subscribe to that view at all there is a lot there is a lot of complexity in the whole situation which he needs to understand and not blame pakistan alone so to go directly now to the kashmir issue because you have been on record to say again that what you would do as a country for your interest you you know there is a certain amount you are entitled to do uh, again uh, i think there was a view that you were one person who were looking beyond the stated line on kashmir you wanted to move beyond un resolutions on kashmir a did you feel that you had the entire support of the military establishment of whom you have been such a close associate and and the guardian and the mentor and b what was your four point agenda on which you thought you could really turn the corner between india pakistan and kashmir well first of all uh, let me correct you that i was prepared to go beyond the stated position but not unilaterally never unilaterally it was to be i was demanding from india they also go beyond their stated positions we have to meet meet somewhere midway for a solution secondly the, your question uh, about the military certainly they were on board it say it's these are propagandist uh, uh, thoughts projected around the world to malign pakistan so if you come back to par Uh, which many people are hoping that you would in 2013 then you feel that you will again have the military establishment backing you in your out of box solutions over kashmir military obeys whatever the government does now this is all a propaganda spread against pakistan army it's a very disciplined force they always back up the army uh, the 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 government so i am very sure they will carry on backing backing up the government so they are you? for peace they are for resolution what was your four point four point agenda for getting peace in kashmir and a lasting solution because that would be dramatic for both countries well no, it's well known i've been saying that demilitarize uh, graduate demilitarization from the line of control and from especially from the cities in uh, in your uh, indian held kashmir uh, then is uh, maximum self governance to the kashmiris then is overwatch a system of overwatch uh, with representatives a commission uh, with representatives from india pakistan and kashmir and making the now the touchy point is the line of control making the line of control irrelevant because pakistan can never accept the finality of the line of control and india has a problem with adjustment uh, 